welcome Rob. <laughs> can't even I can't even welcome you to the podcast like a normal guest. Hold on. Because... Did we start? <laughs> yeah, we started. Uh, For people oh. who don't know, Boston Rob uh and I work together on ex- uh, listen to me. Uh Secret Celebrity Renovation and you and I have been on the road a lot together, but you're famous because of Survivor and <laughs> You know this, but some people, most people don't know. I've actually never seen a show in my life. And you're like apparently a big deal on this show. You've played, what, four times? Can I tell you to shut up on your own show? Like, is that like, like do other people do that? Because we're going to no. keep it, as they say, 100 on this episode, okay? Because no you're ever out told of control me. already, because I don't even know who you are right now. But go ahead, keep going. <laughs> well, so you, Olivia and I did also watch you on the last show that you just did, which is Deal or No Deal Island, and we loved watching it. And I saw what a chess player you are with people, and that's what you're known for. And you wrote a book called Boston Rob's Rules to Life, right? Strategies, basically, that you used on the show. So that's what I want to talk to you, if you could just act normal for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> is me, how- me. <laughs> do people even know you like in real life because i'm so confused but okay let's go <laughs> but like how did you when you were on survivor like how did you know how to read people and i know that you do that constantly but is it just something that you were born with or is it something that somebody can learn how to sort of read people and understand people's personas and then use that to your benefit yeah, so I think like, you know, to to look at what I've done on Survivor over the course of 20 years, it's like a culmination of like, from like when I was 25 years old, the first time I played until now. So I didn't have all the life experience that I have now when I first played. So I don't know that innately, I knew right away how to read people. I think like, it's something I've developed over the course of time with my life experience, with playing the game of poker, with learning about business. And a lot of people don't know, uh, I actually have a degree in psychology from Boston University. So I've also always been fascinated. I'm going to need with- to see that diploma. Yeah, I, I actually, I, actually, you know what? I was thinking that you might ask. So I got it right here. Look at that. <laughs> oh Look at my that. gosh. Yeah. I knew you would never believe me. You're really good at Photoshop. <laughs> Actually, uh, no, we just moved and I still got stuff all over my office and it was right there. But that was pretty quick thinking. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just like always like been fascinated by why different people act differently in different situations. And one thing I've learned about myself, and I talk about this, in uh, the book that I wrote like 15 years ago is that like you have to know who you are before you go out there to play these kind of games and you have to have a good sense of self. And if you really want to understand people's motivations, you have to try to see the game through their lens, through their eyes, right? Like it's really important. A lot of people say you can see the other person's point of view, But unless you can actually, like, see what's in their best interest, then you'll never find that common ground to try to figure out a way to align your best interest and their best interest. And only then will you be able to figure out, like, real alliances, you know? So you have to pay attention. Like, I know it sounds ridiculously simple and easy, but watch what people do. And they'll, their body language, their actions give away so much more than what comes out of their mouth. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, they can say one thing, but how they act and, and, and how they portray themselves is actually a better indicator on how to read people. Okay. So for everyone who's listening, no one who's listening, I'm going to go out and say that, like, is going to be on Survivor. So Forget about the game of Survivor, but that is interesting. But how do you? you never use... know. Well, that's true. That's true. No. I I think you you said that I would win. No, I never said that. <laughs> Not once. As a matter of fact, I think uh, the two words I used 
were don't bother. <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. You actually said that I wouldn't do bad. I wouldn't do that. Was that was the best compliment you said you ever received because I said, uh, I don't, I don't think uh, you would do so bad. Yeah. That I doesn't mean that you would do good. <laughs> but so how do you use these, the same sort of rules or the same tactics that you used on Survivor or any of the other shows? Because I know you were also on the Traders, which hasn't aired yet. I, how do you use that in everyday life? How do you use it even yeah. just in poker or in just taking yeah, the kids in business, to school? I mean, the, the lessons are applicable for like all different things. I think the two main things, the two biggest indicators to uh, doing well on shows like these and, and in business, in life, and in relationships is number one, your ability to adapt to situations. Like a lot of times you have to expect the unexpected, like life continuously is going to throw you curveballs and it's like how do you deal with that adversity how do you take something that is outside of your control and figure out a way to deal with it to get a positive outcome and the second thing is your social awareness and this a little bit people are born with you know but you have to be able to read the room you have to know like at the end of the day, how other people are perceiving you and you have to be able to do it accurately because like perception is reality for everyone, you know, like there are people that are good at their craft and I don't want to name them, but people I know in poker like me. specifically. Okay. And you can name like, me. They're really good at their craft, but they're like terrible. They have no self-awareness. They They don't understand you know how they're perceived by others okay and, wait let's uh, go back to that because you said that in the beginning that you have to have a sense of self what does that mean to you having a sense of self it's simply knowing who you are right like survivor is not the place or any of these game shows are not the place to try to figure out who you are that's why i would never let any of my kids play these games at 18, 19 years old. They don't have enough experience. So knowing who you are means like, what do you stand for? Where's your line in the sand? Where are your moral compass? You know, and at the same time, what, where are you willing to go in these different situations? What are you willing to compromise? Because if you just stand up there and say, I'm not going to lie to anybody, I'm not going to do anything. And the game actually requires that you're actually handcuffing yourself and you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage, you might as well stay home. Like the right. name of the show is Survivor. It's strategy-based. It's alliance-based. It's relationship-based. It's not about who's the best, has the best morals, you know? Because yeah. like inside the game, I'll do whatever it takes to win to a degree, you know, where other people won't. But that's and not true, Rob, because even in Deal or No Deal, you had such an... If uh, connection with Aaron. And there were times that you put yourself out on the line for that friendship. So you, I don't think that that's true, that you would do whatever it takes to win because you didn't. So deal or no deal is a little different. It's, it's a lot different show, right? From a strategy standpoint versus survivor in deal or no deal Island. There is a lot that is left up to chance that you can't control. Right. And ironically, when I first got out there and went to the island to play that game, I was super frustrated with the format because essentially for the people that don't know, uh, there's a there's a challenge or they call them excursions where you can earn safety through immunity, through the highest case value. And then uh, only one person earns that. And then the other two people that are at the bottom, essentially one of them will face off against the banker in a game of deal or no deal, where the winner of that, that game is allowed to eliminate anybody else in the game with the exception of the person at the top. So to simplify, because I know that's complicated for a lot of people. Basically, there's a challenge or an excursion and one person does really good and two people do really bad and everybody else is in the middle. The people that do really bad then have a chance to eliminate someone else 
So you're basically giving so much power to the people on the bottom. Yeah. And at first, I found that so incredibly frustrating, right? Because I was like, man, like, here's someone that's terrible. And if they get lucky in the game, they're allowed to eliminate you. But as the season went on, I realized, like, optimally, it's better to be in the bottom and risk your life in the game in order to eliminate someone else. So the lesson, I guess, is like in order to really live, you have to be willing to die, which a lot of people aren't, right? Yeah, like you right. have to be willing to put your life on the line in order to go forward and move ahead. Right. And even if you do, there's still so much that's left up to chance. Which for someone like me that likes to control situation, likes to try to get all my bases covered and strategically figure out what the best move is, that was really hard. But again, at the end of the game, I realized the genius behind the format because it's a lot like life in that there are situations that are going to come up in everyone's life that you can't control. Right. And then you revert back to the lessons that I learned in Survivor. And that is, you know, you have to be willing to adapt to the situation. Yeah. It's simple. My mother always used to tell me, you know, if you can do something about it, get moving and do something about it. And if you can't, don't worry about it and move on. And it's really simple. But I think a lot of people get caught up in the everyday, you know, what if, what could I, what should I, you know, instead of like, just take action and do it if you can. You know? I think people would be surprised and you, I know you mess with me a lot, especially on my social media with your horrible comments that you leave on my posts, but I think people would be surprised how much of a friendship we've, we've created and like, you're my brother and we even have a code. Oh, word that... your brother now? <laughs> <laughs> Was I adopted by your mom or how did it work? How did that happen? <laughs> no, but we've created such a good friendship that we even have a code word that if I need something like it's, you know, it's an emergency and you've helped me through like, even now with everything that's going through with my dog, like you talk to me on the phone and, and you, and I have had, we are, I would say, especially for a TV relationship, like working relationship, we're really close. So for everyone who's listening, they've listened to me for years. Like how, how did you read me when you first met me on set? Yeah. Uh, you want me to, to give the funny story or the real story? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you had a lot going on in your personal life at the time when we first met, yeah. right? But you put that aside and you were very welcoming to me. I was obviously the new person, you know, on the crew, at the time and you made me feel comfortable and made me feel at home. And I always appreciated that, yeah. you know? And, and then I uh, give you a noogie. <laughs> and my ears have been bleeding for the last three years ever since then. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, but you know, it's like, you, you can tell, like you're a go-getter, you're always hustling, you always have something else going on. And I think like like-minded people that work hard in a shell too, you know, she's, she's always on the go. And I think uh, what's cool about our, our little group on Secret Celebrity Renovation is that's something we come together to do. But outside of that, we all do other things as well. Yeah. You know, um, and I think people that, that, you know, like I say hustle, I use that word like in a positive way, not in a negative way. But like you, you work hard, you go after what you want. You're ambitious, you know, and um, that's not everybody. And, yeah. and what's wild is like, it could be everybody, but it's not meant to be everybody. Like, I feel like, you know, uh, some people given the opportunity, I think that one of the reasons why I've been able to do this for over 20 years is like, I've been consistently me. Like you can talk to my buddies from high school, from grade school. I still keep in touch with them they'll tell you I'm still the same kid I was back then, you know? And I think in a little bit of a weird way in the television world and like entertainment, maybe that's refreshing a little bit. Like, like my buddies would never let it go to my head anyway, you yeah. know, but I think it's a little bit of an East coast mentality 
where, you know, like you're never going to get too big. Like your boys will just put you right back in line. Yeah. So, um, so wait, going back to, you were saying that to have the sense of self and then you were your life or motto of just like, if you could do something about it, do it. And if not in, in my life now, I'm going through a loss of my dog and there's nothing I can do about that. And so I was talking to a friend of mine earlier, of just, you know, I'm, I've gone through a lot of stuff in my life, a lot. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, get up and get it out of bed and just keep going. And this is, I think the first time, actually, I know it's the first time in my entire life that I feel this de like debilitating, like horrible heaviness. And so what, what do you say when, if anybody's listening to this and they are going through some sort of transition, whether it's a loss of a pet or a divorce or of a job of just not being able to get out of the rut. Like, how do you deal with that in your own life? You want me to be Dr. Phil? I'm Dr. Rob. You want me to put my Dr. Rob hat on? The psychology hat? Because I mean, you have to, you've, you've, you know how to deal with things. Like, right? Yeah. Isn't that what, you, I don't that's know. why you won I mean, at all these games. I think like, you know, it comes back to, you have to try to put yourself in the other person's position. You have to try to see it through their eyes. So, of course, it's super emotional. Like, that emotion is the reason why you're feeling the feelings that you're feeling. Anyone that loses a pet or a loved one, anything. At the same time, like, if you take the emotion out of it, which is hard to do because you're in it, right? But if you yeah. take the emotion out of it, everybody dies, right? All yeah. pets are going to die eventually. Yeah. Like that's just a part of life. That's who we are. Like at some point the end comes from everyone. So when I say try to see it through the other person's point of view, I'm not even saying through your eyes. I'm saying through your dog's eyes. You know, it's yeah. not about you. You have to honor your dog and that, you know, like, like without a doubt, even though it's painful for you, you don't want her to suffer, right? But what if somebody's listening to this and they're going through a big transition of loss, even if it's a relationship or a job or whatever? How have you how have you dealt with loss in your life? Because you've not always won Survivor. You've not always won every poker game that you've. Of course, right. yeah. So I mean, I, I lose a lot more than I win, but <laughs> I I just. I feel like something better is coming. I don't know. I, I know that's not the really the answer, but like, like it's like I'm able to separate, right? Like, and I think that's a hard thing, but like the emotional part of it, right? Like uh, a lot of people fold under pressure because the emotion, the stress, the pressure is too much. I have found that I like that situation. Like when the pressure's on, I feel like that's when I do my best. So as far as like loss goes, I mean, I'm realistic about the prospect when I go into these games. You know, if there's 20 people in the game, you have a 5% chance of winning. Right. That means 95% of the time you're not going to win. Don't get me wrong. I'm super optimistic and I feel like my odds are even better and I go in to play these games and I'm going to give everything I have to win and I believe I'm going to win. And that's what I want to do. If it doesn't happen, I mean, you know, I don't make my whole identity, everything about me, about one game, one thing. I'll give you an example. And this is this is super personal and very fresh, but but I'll give you a real life example uh, yesterday, my daughter had her first golf match, you know, and it was her first time competing against other kids in another school. And, uh, she didn't do great. I mean, they were great. They were, she did great throughout, you know, the match. She hit some good shots and everything, but she didn't score great. And then after, you know, she was really emotional about it. And I was like, man, I was like, I need to, you know, do the right thing here and like teach her, you know, and I didn't want to like give her like hard love, like, you know, because at this stage, what's that going to do? It's just going to discourage her. Golf is a really hard game. I'm 
48 years old and I'm still not a professional. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm not even any good really. But, uh, but I was just like, you know, Lucia, like, you know, it's your first match. It's one time you've gone through this. You're going to lose a lot. There's going to be a lot of losses, but it's not like, you know, how you, if you win or lose, but how you handle it, right? Mm -hmm. It's so weird. I got another thing right here. I'm just, it's staring at me in my face. And I swear to God, this is not planned. But this is right here. This is real life. Like, it's stuck here. Can what you see it? that? Can you read what does that? It say? No. It says, a champion is not, not someone, someone who wins, who wins all, the all the time. A champion is someone who gives everything they've got to win. Yep. And it's like, you know, so throughout life, you're going to have losses. And that's a part of life. But like persistence and getting up and keeping going is like what's important. And uh, then I took her off for ice cream and we're good today because there'll be another match next week and yeah. we've got to practice again. So, I mean, like, uh, it's emotional. And I think that's what emotions, like you have to try to get emotion out of stuff. You see it in business all the time, you know, negotiating, uh, if you let the emotion, and I'm guilty of it too, sometimes, you know, I feel a certain way about something. And then once you realize that's not your brain, that's not logic talking, that's your emotion, that's where uh, you ultimately end up having problems if you let your emotions dictate your actions. It's hard, especially a game like Survivor, where, you know, at its core, it's a relationship game, right? Right, right. So, Again, for the people that don't know, it starts with a certain amount of people. As the people are voted off, as you vote the people off, at some point they, they make up a jury. And when there's only two or three people left, those people that you voted off come back to decide which one is going to be the winner. Right. So at that point, it's out of your hands. So you have to realize that like, even when you're slitting their throats and doing what you have to do to advance in the game how you make them feel is going to dictate how they vote. Yeah. Sometimes they vote for the person they like the most and the person they want to win. Other times they spitefully vote against that person that made them feel bad. Right, right, right. And so that, the, it'll come know, back to like, bite you in the ass. So yeah. you, you know, you, I, I watch you on set and you do read people and I, you do always think that you're right, but I know that you're not because you think that you're right. That's your, that's your emotion talking right no, now. No, 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 that's actually just right, luck. But it's I am luck. actually. <laughs> but when is, have, obviously you haven't been right about everything. What's, has, have there been times in these games or even in poker where you really felt the intuition that you were right, but you were, you weren't, or do you like, it, it does that also like do you second guess yourself a lot because you're not always hitting you know a home run? No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I mean it, it, it's ridiculous, but like I I feel because you have a sense of humor about it. No, now like I feel confident in like what I believe, like I do, and I think like that goes back to knowing who you are. I know who I am. Can I learn things, something new? Yeah, I can learn new things even at my age. But like, I like fundamentally who I am now, like I feel confident, you know, and when I feel it, I say it. And a lot of it is off the cuff, right? Because I think like, you know, if anything earlier when I was younger, I would do things, you know, and feel like sometimes you feel something, right? And you act on it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're wrong about that. So I think with age, like I've learned to not be so matter of fact, even though I know that kind of goes directly against what you just said. But like some things, I just know it and I feel it. And I feel like I am confident about it for that reason. Um, 
I don't know. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky question because, like, depending on the situation, I might have a different answer. Because I can think of times in poker where, you know, I've been... Like, poker is not a science. Like, it is. Like, it's math-based. But there's also, like, that intuition, right, right. that goes right. along with it. And, you know, theoretically, you should err on the side of the math. Almost always you should like embrace the math because the math doesn't lie. The math may be, you may be lucky or unlucky, but it doesn't lie. But every once in a while you kind of go against it because you have a feeling about something. Right. And I do think there is something, you know, beyond like just physics and statistics and math. That is this, you know, unquantifiable sense that you get from a situation where you act a certain way. And like they say, a mother's intuition or like at the poker table, they call it a soul read. Like I read his soul. I knew he was bluffing. Uh, in Survivor, like like a lot of times, though, like you can you can go back and you can see there were signs, but they may have been subconscious that you didn't see. But I do think there's something to like. Uh, I don't want you to get all too excited because I know you're into crystals and energy <laughs> and Leo and all of that stuff. But like, there is something to it. But I wouldn't base my whole life on that. You know, you wouldn't base your whole life on your intuition. No. Well, no, I wouldn't because I feel like intuition combined with Knowledge. like these other things. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's like paying attention. Like you call it intuition, but like you pay attention. This person did this over and over and over again. They're probably going to do it again. Right. You know, they have a history of doing it. No, like, he promised me he was going to change. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like we've had this conversation before. <laughs> this time he meant it. Hold on, hold on. I may have recorded it somewhere too. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. It's it, because, as, especially for me as a woman, like we do have strong intuition, but it's there's also times that it's not necessarily intuition and it's fear and you have to just be able to decipher what what was really talking to you and and use your knowledge base and your gut you know but so you know, it's interesting that you bring up fear because fear is an emotion where depending on the situation in real life probably not but in these games you can really use it to your advantage. You can use it against other people. How? If you can identify their fears. Because the truth is, right, if you want to manipulate a situation, all you have to do is understand what motivates the other person and prey on that. Some people are motivated by fear. They're afraid. So if you lean into that, then you can dictate their actions, right? Which is pretty ridiculous. I mean, that's some that's that's like a tactic that you could use in a game like Survivor or on Traders or something like that. But in real life, it would in business it would be seen as unethical, even though it happens all the time with like corporate takeover. Right. You see it where or real estate deals or you know, like people fearing like they're going to lose something. Like the fear of loss is so much more powerful than, you know, the opportunity of gain. Yeah. Right. Like if you if 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 I offered you, you know, or anybody your entire net worth over the over a 75, 25 flip of a coin that was weighted three quarters in your favor. So three out of four times, you're going to win that bet and you'll double your net worth. But one out of four times, potentially you lose everything. A lot of people would say, no way, I'm never going for that. The right. math says you should always go for it. It's skewed in your favor in a big way. But the prospect of loss is so powerful that you would lose everything and have to start over. Right. Like it's paralyzing to some people. 
And I think like when you talk about risk versus reward and making decisions and how you act, a lot of the people that are able to understand that risk and manage it and embrace it ultimately always end up going further. Right. 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 So in that 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 example, you can use in all aspects of life. But like everything is how you feel and whether or not how you manage your own risk factor in whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in that, in the risks that you take, I mean, you have a family, you have four girls. It's a little bit more of a responsibility when you're, when you do have a family to provide for, how do you manage those fears knowing that there's so many people that rely on you? Yeah, so it's calculated now, right? So like I'm not 25 years old and risking everything on the flip of a coin, even if it is weighted three quarter of 25, right? Mm -hmm. But I think uh, understanding the risk and being balanced in your approach, right? Like, so you don't want to be too safe all the time. If you always take the safe path, the super conservative path all the time, you're never going to get anywhere than where you're going. As a matter right. of fact, you could lose, you know, in the long run. From a financial point of view, if you keep your money in the bank and the interest you're earning in the bank doesn't outpace inflation, your money is worth less year after year after year. And eventually you're going to run out. But more importantly than finances, the clock is ticking for everyone, yeah. right? And I know you're going through it with, with your dog right now, but every one of us has an internal clock. We're only here for a certain amount of time. So how you choose to spend your time is up to you. And that balance factor is really, you know, everybody has to weigh that equally differently for themselves. The biggest thing I've learned now at my stage of life is there's no destination. We're not getting to be anywhere where we're going to what? Sit on a beach and that's it? Like, this is it. The journey is the destination. So a little bit, the my phone rings like, you want to go do this? If I want to go do it, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. You know, at the same time, we got to balance family because you're going to make sure they're good. Make yeah. sure, you know, they're accounted for and they're getting their cup full. But like, you can't. Like, just focus all your energy on getting to a place when, because then, like, your time will run out, you know? And the other thing uh, my dad always told me, which I thought was important, was that, like, if your cup is not full, you can't give to anyone else. Yes, right? that's true. So make sure you take care of yourself, too. And sometimes I'm guilty of, like, running here and there and doing everything, and, and, and I forget to do that, and I get burnt out. But, um, uh, yeah. Any other yeah. life lessons you need to know? Well, so when, <laughs> when you walk into, you're speaking of calculations, like when you walk into a room, do you like scan people for their yeah, body for language? The record, for the record, we got to take a little break here and I got to let the people know this is like the nicest you've been to me for the longest period of time at one time without losing it. Usually something happens, so let's just mock it down, okay? You're right. This is like we've gone 33 minutes of me not calling you a bad name or yeah, yeah, <laughs> making yeah. fun of you. So this is not normal, guys. This is her television persona. Do you want to? Do you want to be on the show every week just so that you can get my nice, the oh, nice Brina? Forget um, it. We're, 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 that's the show that would pop off. We got the real Sabrina. <laughs> Nobody needs to see that. Nobody needs to see Nobody that. Nobody needs to see that. I agree. But when you walk into a room, do you scan people? Uh, I don't know. I just kind of feel like I'm aware. I'm aware. I've I've just been perceptive of like what's going on, and I'm I'm not like trying to size anybody up or anything like that, but. Uh, you know, simple, like, lessons that I've learned throughout my life that, like, just come natural now that I don't, I'm not trying to analyze everybody in a certain situation. I mean, let me preface it by saying, if we're playing a game like Survivor or Traders or Deal or No Deal Island, 
then I'm absolutely paying attention to everything. Even little micro, you know, uh, movements and, and, and sayings in every little detail. And I pick up on it. And that's because of experience I have. Yeah. But in a normal everyday setting, if you're asking me if I analyze you on uh, Secret Celebrity Renovation, absolutely I do. No. Yeah, but you, you're not always right. You're not always right. And I've told you that. Just the, know, when we were I shooting know. last week, you were wrong about something. And, but you're always adamant that you think you know it all. But we'll Listen, to, that's the next twice, episode. Twice in the last 20 years is okay. All right. <laughs> um, I can't wait to see you on Traders. I can't wait to see you on Traders. Yeah. It's going to be my appointment television that I haven't had in years. So I, I'm looking forward to that because Olivia and I loved watching you on Deal or No Deal. Yeah, Deal or No Deal Island was fun. It was a different format. It was uh, once I understood, you know, the game and I, I picked it up pretty quickly, it became a lot of fun. And, and uh, it's a fun show. Until you Traders, see Traders is, is different in a lot of different ways. Uh, but it's always, you know, it's hard now for me to go play these shows because I have such a reputation and people know me and everything, yeah. but at the same time, I love the challenge of it. So, uh, it's going to be fun to watch. I'll tell you I that. can't wait. I'll, for everyone who's listening, I'll put all of Rob's information on the bottom. Don't even bother DMing him. He doesn't even read them. So just, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a waste of time. I'd argue with you, but you're right. <laughs> Well, thank you, Rob, for being on the show. I hope that's you it. It's over. It's over. See, was oh that? I told you it was going to be painless. I know. I've Look how nice I was. Forever. You finally let me come on. Okay. <laughs> I've been asking you forever. Wait, don't hang up. <laughs> what do you mean, don't hang up?